Hello, my name is Mark Seifer. I'm the author of the Rudy Stein Quadrilogy, which are four novels which I wrote over the course of about 35 years. They're all personal stories that deal with my life. The Rasputin's Nephew is a parapsychology spy novel. I taught parapsychology for 15 years. I worked with Uri Geller, a super psychic, and uh, I've discussed that in a previous YouTube. Doppelganger and Crystal Knight are uh, two books which deal with two major stories. There's a backstory which follows a Jewish family, the Maxwell family, trying to maintain their airline through World War I in Doppelganger and through World War II in uh, Crystal Knight. And the modern story is ace reporter Rudy Stein uh, on the trail of a major computer hacker. He runs into his doppelganger, his double, who turns out to be German, and that will tie him to the backstory. The fourth book is called Fate Line. It's a graphological murder mystery. I'm a graphologist. I've been a handwriting expert since the early 1970s. I've testified in federal and state court, civil and criminal court. I do this for a living. I've had a few cases in my life that I wanted to deal with in fictional form, and I also wanted to deal in fictional form with the Joan Benet Ramsey case. In the Joan Benet Ramsey case, remember this young, beautiful girl got, uh, they said he was, she was kidnapped, and there was a ransom note, and they found her uh, dead, unfortunately, in the bottom of the basement of their house. And the question was, if you match the ransom note to the father's handwriting, the mother's handwriting, is there a good match? So I wanted to play that out in fictional form. Another event which happened in my life I wanted to deal with, and this had to do with a real case from 2002. Associated Press International contacted me. They had a letter signed by bin Laden, and they wanted to know if bin Laden was really alive. So I had to look at the signature and match it to known signatures of bin Laden. And this was the biggest story in the world at the time. There was a question of whether he had been uh, on kidney dialysis, whether he died in the bombing. No one knew. So I literally was filmed with the signature and I discussed his signature and if it was a forgery, if it was his real handwriting. And it really did go out all over the world. But the very day that it went out, there was a fellow, uh, his name was Malvo. He was part of, he was a Beltway sniper. He was in Washington, D.C. He was using a rifle and he was in the trunk of a car. He was picking off people, killing them with a rifle. And that story just knocked my story right out of the box. So I wanted to deal with that concept as well. So what prompted the book was a real event which occurred in my life, which I was going to fictionalize. I was dealing with an embezzlement case. I had a man's will and I had a number of his known signatures. So you've got the will and you've got all the known signatures. And I thought the will was a forgery. It was very close, but it wasn't an exact match. It was my belief that it was a forgery. And I'm getting ready to testify. Three days before trial, his son comes in and he gives me another whole stack of handwritings of the man's secretary signing the man's signature. Now I've got two sets of signatures. I've got the signatures of the secretary signing uh, the man's name, I've got the man's known signatures, and I've got the will. And the secretary's signatures is an exact match to the will, and she gets all the money in the will. So I've now got a slam dunk case. So we go to court with my slam dunk case, but because the information came in so late, the other side opposed it, the judge gave them 24 hours, and then 24 hours he made a ruling and he said, directly to me and to my lawyer, he said, uh, Dr. Seifer, you will not use this information. It came in too late. I don't like October surprises, and you can only use the other information. So I had to deal with just my original report. So I get up on the stand, and I have to swear now. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? The judge has prevented me from telling the whole truth. I literally saw my whole life flash before me, but he was very clear about it, and experts all the time have testimony limited, 
So that's what I had to do. I limited my testimony to my original report. I wasn't allowed to deal with her handwriting at all. We lost the case, and in my opinion, an embezzler got away with literally millions of dollars. So I wanted to replay this story uh, in fictional form, but I decided instead of using me, suppose it was an old Jewish guy who was a Holocaust survivor. This guy's in his 80s. He's been through the worst of human uh, uh, humanity, and he gets on the stand after the judge says, you will not uh, do this, and he says to the judge, uh, Judge, how dare you ask me to limit my testimony? I know, you know, the whole truth here, and you're not allowing me to tell the whole truth. And the judge says, how dare you uh, bring this up? I'm citing you for contempt of court, and you're going to jail. Now, Rudy Stein, ace reporter for Modern Times Magazine, is covering this story. He's got what he thinks is a Pulitzer Prize winning story, Holocaust survivor arrested for telling the truth. That's his story. He's expecting it to be on the cover of Modern Times, which is my fictional magazine. And the very day that it's about to come out, a young ice skater out in Utah gets kidnapped and there's a ransom note. And that story, you got this pretty eight-year-old and nine-year-old girl, knocks it off the block, and so, like the Joan Benet thing, he, his story is, is off the charts and, and it's gone. So he decides to fly out to Utah and he tries to uncover uh, who kidnapped this girl. And since there's a ransom note, he wants to get uh, the old graphologist out of jail and have him involved. There's also a series of there's murder mysteries in this. So it's a very complicated uh, novel. It has a lot of my own background in it. I also have another story, which is a love story. Uh, the old graphologist, his name is Jacob Bruno. He has a young protege, her name is Sarah Calloway. And she's a graphologist, you know, budding graphologist. And she has to testify when he's in court. And she literally bumps into a palm reader. And uh, they fall in love, but she's got mixed feelings because she doesn't believe in palm reading. So I've got a bit of palm reading in here, and I've got uh, this murder mystery. And uh, when the murderer is on her trail, she starts to travel with the palm reader, and he's traveling with a group of tarot readers and an astrologer. And there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of fun to the story. And so that's really a, a good amount of information about Fate Line. I hope you enjoy the book. It's not a formula book. It contains a lot of my own personal life, but again, it's complete fiction. Thank you.